The passage from Mark's Gospel this morning is familiar, but this line jumped out at me. The line where Jesus did not speak to the crowds except in parables. Here is the one with the mustard seed. Do you think if seeds grow automatically, the concern for the farmer who has planted the seed is not how to make it grow, but what may hinder the growth that would come naturally? There's a similar concern for pastors and evangelists of God's Word. What keeps our ministries from growing? What is hindering the growth that we believe God wants to give? Not to put too fine a point on it, but the answer probably lies in the field of discipleship and spiritual formation. Ha! Huh. Well, you want to take this further? What do you say? Let's walk through these doors and let's worship God. Blessed good morning to you one and all, and welcome to Drexel Hill United Methodist Church this third Sunday after Pentecost. Let's begin now our worship by joining together in the call to worship included in your bulletin. In the midst of the congregation, we will praise you. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous and give thanks to God's holy name. Let us join now together in our collect for the morning. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us a desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ of the Lord. Amen. As we move now to our service of confession, I say to you, we know ourselves to be a broken people, separated from ourselves, others, and the Lord of life. Let us then confess our brokenness together. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord and let us now in one voice receive our pardon say thanks be to God and now dear sisters and brothers let us offer one another signs of peace the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us join now together in the Lord's Prayer and pray as our Saviour taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Have you ever noticed how some things in the garden just grow? My personal favorite this week is black currants. Our black currant shrubs are becoming ripe even here in June. And my least personal favorite is in the garden I have behind my study at the church, there's thistle. Have you ever tried to keep a plant that isn't native to the area where you plant it? 
When we were newlyweds, I brought Barbara a passion flower back from Appalachia. I was in Kentucky that summer with the Appalachia Service Project, and a man in the town had a cyclone fence around his yard woven full of the most beautiful Chantilly lace, rich purple flowers, just beautiful. Well, some plants that winter over in central Appalachia don't do as well in a Philadelphia winter. But that didn't stop me from hoping. Sometimes we must work hard just to keep something going. And sometimes we have nothing to do. Wait. Nature will take its course. The point of our gospel lesson from Mark this morning is that the kingdom of God is like sowing seed or using a sickle or it is like the branches of a mustard bush. Inasmuch as I can't possibly keep any of those images together in one place, I think it's easy for me to claim we're dealing with something unique here, a unique parabolic message from Jesus. The only parable to be found only in the Gospel of Mark. The other parables, you can find them in Mark and Luke and Matthew. And, but here, no. This parable we're dealing with this morning only appears in Mark. And here's the unexpected point. The kingdom of God grows in a hidden, mysterious way, independent of human effort. Because although the parable speaks of growth, that doesn't mean that the kingdom of God develops naturally in history thanks to human efforts. Another thing this parable isn't is an exhortation to do something. And that is really irritating to United Methodists. Rather, growth happens as the miraculous work of God and harvest as an outcome that is both gift and miracle. We, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. Whenever we take ourselves and our efforts too seriously, seeking by our plans and programs to bring in the kingdom of God, it's time to check out Mark 4, 26 to 34, again. The corrective is right there on the page. It is important to achieve. You'll never get Mark 4, 26, 34 passed as a work project, though, and it won't get you promoted at school. But achievement isn't our place so much in the kingdom of God's sphere. We may have things to do at work. We may have benchmarks to achieve at school. But in the kingdom, no, that's not our work. We do want to perform well, get good conduct ribbons, achieve the honor roll, but against such arrogant self-importance stands verse 28 here in Mark. The earth produces of itself a little illusion there to God's hidden presence and power. Now the parable says the harvest will come. That's Jesus' message to the disciples. It stands in opposition to many of the other messages that were filling the air at the time, ones that generated doubt or caused people to worry or care. Instead of waiting for God to fulfill the promise, some wanted to force the coming of the kingdom or to build it themselves by a revolution like the zealots, by exact calculation, like the apocalypticists, or by complete 
obedience to the law like the Pharisees. But you don't need to hearken back to first century Palestine to find zealots and apocalypticists and people who know the letter of the law without the comprehension of the meaning of the law. They are all around us today. You might even meet one of them at your next family picnic. <laughs> I reckon the parable is asking if we are willing to wait for God to do what God is sure to do. And if so, wait with the carefree attitude becoming of the children of God. No spiritual maneuvering nor misguided efforts to build our lives this way entirely upon God's promise and no longer upon our own ability or inability demands all the feeling and thinking and doing and speaking of which we are capable. So if seed grow automatically, and they do, the concern for us who plant the seed of God's word is not how to make it grow, but what may be hindering the growth that will come naturally. What keeps our congregation from growing, for instance? What is hindering the growth that we believe God wants to give us? While in the parable, the sower does nothing after scattering the seed, real farmers, in contrast to farmers in parables, they spend a lot of time and energy working against forces that might hinder the natural growth of the seed. Pruning and irrigation and weeding, fertilizer is applied to make up for nutrients that are lacking in the soil, yet even with all that work, Farmers still wait in faith. The growth happens while they sleep, not because of their efforts. And we, dear brother and sister disciples, let us wait. And no, it's not our efforts, but we will see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. As we move now to the sending forth, I say to you, to live is to risk and to care. We are ready to live for all humankind. Life is mission. We choose to be sent. And now as you have been gathered in from the world to hear the gospel proclaimed, I send you back now into that same world to tell of the living Christ and take this benediction with you. God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer be with you now and remain with you evermore. Amen.